Hello and you're welcome to The Big Tech Show with me, Adrian Weckler, the tech editor of the Irish and Sunday Independent. And this week I'm talking to a tech CEO who decided to grow and build her tech company way outside any big city in Westport. Fidelma McGurk, CEO and founder of uh, Payslip. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Adrian. Great to be here. Thanks for bringing me on. Now, we've all had the dream. Work and play in a beautiful landscape paradise. You acted on yours six years ago. You moved yes. to Westport from Dublin. Yes, we did. Uh, we were working there like so many other couples and uh, we were spending far more time on the M50 and uh, commuting to work than we were spending time doing the sports that we liked or doing the social things that we like to do. Uh, so we we just decided that we would take the plunge and move to the west of Ireland. So we moved to Westport, County Mayo. And at that point, had you started your company, Payslip, which lets other companies automate their payroll uh, no, no, not at all. So I'm, we moved in uh, the summer of 2015 and I founded Payslip Incorporated in, in July, sorry, in May 2016. So I did have ideas in the autumn and started developing them, but I hadn't started the business at all before I left Dublin. OK, now, when you were thinking of doing this, when people think of starting companies and I should say for listeners that you had uh, a lot of experience uh, in this before because you were uh, part of a very successful uh, company uh, before that. Um, the normal things that apply, how am I going to hire people? Where am I going to get them? Where am I going to get access to finance? How did that all play out when you are in Westport? Yeah, so um, you're right. I've been involved in lots of startups before, especially within like the tax break group. And I've been involved in building uh, lots of software systems and commercializing those. Um, so the business practice of it was it was something that was familiar to me. So that was good. Um, setting it up and finding a business separately then and getting the funding for that, that was new. All right. Um, so really, I didn't really have a question around whether Westport was a good location from which to build Payslip as a business. But you're right, the investors absolutely did. Um, so initially, I funded Payslip myself and um uh, also, so, sorry, can I just stop you there? When you say the investors did, did, so you're saying that they had maybe a negative view of trying to grow a company from there? I would say, I wouldn't say negative. I'd say they had um, a legitimate question to ask about where the team was going to be based that would support the growth in the business that they were going to invest. Um, so, within that, uh, was Westport the, the best place to be from a customer perspective and, and enabling to sell to them, enable to deliver to them? And then would we have access to the labour market for the skills that we needed to build the different kinds of teams that we built? And the overall question, was everybody going to be based in Westport was a question. Mm, OK, and your obvious answer to that was no, right? Well, over my background, I've never had all my team based in one location. So it's a luxury that I look forward to at some point in my life, but it hasn't happened yet. So exactly. We said we'll we'll hire the best skills uh, where we find them. And as much as possible, we'll try and have as many jobs based in Westport and Mayo and as many jobs based outside of that in core hopes that we wanted to build for cultural development. It's good to have some hopes where you can. What's the ceiling? Um, with a company. I mean, how many people uh, does Payslip now employ? Um, as of yesterday, at the start of September, we were on 71 and we were on 29 when we went for investment about four months ago. Okay. So, and I think you announced earlier this year that you were hoping to hire 150 people. So you're That's at 71 right. odd now. And it strikes me that you can do that. You can uh, employ people remotely and with a certain kind of a company and an operation, you can do that and have people in, in different locations. As you start to scale, it must get a little bit harder, doesn't it? My question is really, what is the ceiling from which you can base a company's headquarters in a regional town as opposed to a city? Um. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact number yet, but I do think I think I think your point is extremely valid. So I think it depends on very much around the skills that you want to uh, you need to hire for. So, for example, uh, we have a range of skills. We're hiring for software developers, um, and we've done a good job of 
finding good people for the software and engineering organization in terms of solutions architects um, and project managers, some software developers and leaders here in Mayo. And we've done that over the last four to five months and they've started. Uh, what we're planning to do is also build to grow your own policy for graduates. So we want to hire some graduates out of NUIG, out of GMIT in, in Castle Bar and train them up in the way best practice of software development. And we've already worked out a way to do that. So I, I definitely think you can, you can get to 100, you can get to 150 here. You should be able to with a mix of skills. And then you need to be creative and working at least with the local educational universities and, and schools to see how you can have some feeder programs for, for growth past that. And we can talk about hybrid working in a few minutes, but to some degree, you, I'm assuming you're essentially asking a lot of people to relocate. If the, the smaller the town or the area that you're in, yeah. the more chance it will be that you'll be asking to relocate from a larger jobs market to that area. Yeah. So so to date, we haven't had that as much of an issue. We've had some people who did apply to a space in Dublin and then chose to relocate to Mayo. They happen to be from Mayo. So that was useful. Um, there's definitely untapped segments of like lots of skills of people who are from Mayo, Sligo, Galway, who leave for university and don't come back until they're in their like their 30s and their early 40s. And that counts not just for East Coast Ireland, but also in London and the UK. So we've also had some people are relocating from London due to COVID to Ireland and then deciding that they'll come back and live in the West. So I think the key question now is that we can raise the profile for people who aren't necessarily from Mayo, but would like to live the lifestyle that you can have and work in a, in a high growth tech company here. That's going back to the dream, which I mentioned at the, uh, the hmm. top of the podcast. And listen, I'm with you. I can absolutely <laughs> see that happening. On the other hand, it does strike me that there is a balance here. Like there, there are things that you're giving up. I mean, you're gaining this magnificent landscape, this fantastic yeah. outdoors lifestyle. Yeah. Um, there are some things what giving up. What are you up. giving up, Adrian? Tell well, me. the first, the, the main thing, I could talk about things like, you know, variety of entertainment, you know, cultural centers, yeah. you know, theaters, eateries, that sort of stuff, society events, you chance to meet kind of interesting people. There are things that might conventionally come up. The one thing that does strike me and I'm, I'd be interested to know how you found this. You need a car. In a city, you don't really need a car. If I moved to the outskirts yeah. of Westport, I'd have to have a car. How did you, you find that? You would need to have a car. That wasn't a struggle for me because I've always had one. Right. I suppose it depends on the on the age of the candidate that's moving here. If if you have somebody who's in their 30s and their 40s and has a family, I can guarantee even if they're living in Dublin, they already have a car. Mm. Uh, so you're absolutely right about that. If you're also attracting people who like outdoor sports, they will also have it because they would have been using it for their surfboards or their boats anyway. Um, honestly, anybody outside of Dublin and Cork has a car usually in Ireland because there isn't enough public transport for the distances you need to well, go or uh, yeah, and all of that. So absolutely. that's a definite yes. Yeah. yeah. And that, but that, your commute your commute is a lot easier. So you can get unless you're actually you choose to be in one of the towns or the, the villages further away from Westport, you can and except in six weeks from July to August in Westward, you can kind of get anywhere in 10 minutes, you mm -hmm. know. So you can also cycle to work up the Greenway. And, and that's a very practical thing that people in our building do. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I, the, the other thing, a small consideration, you're nowhere near an airport. Yeah, it's 47 minutes drive from here to Knock Airport. Mm -hmm. And you can get to London in less than an hour. Uh, so, um, so that's fine for London. Right. And it's I know for London. Not flies to a couple of other places if you happen to have. Yeah, you can fly to London and then there's usually the flights or there were. Lourdes, I think they fly times. to Lourdes as well, do they? <laughs> there probably are. Yeah, I don't have a big business target business group, customer group in uh, in Lourdes. Adrian, Maybe you will in but, two or three years time. I don't know. Yeah, but we did. We did. Let me see how that We did. Um, but yeah, there's also flights to other locations, whether it's, uh, they're mostly tourism destinations, but there's also like in Germany and other places in Europe. So it depends. You won't have the range that you're going to have in Dublin. That's natural. Uh, but that hasn't been a blocker for our business. I suppose in the end for, for Payslip, we sell technology to multinational companies and we're selling into the global payroll function, which in itself expects to have some amount of geo distribution. So none of our customers have all of their global payroll people in one location. Anyway, and that has nothing to do with COVID. It's just the nature of the business mm. by definition. So 
when we are taking flights to meet customers, um, it's usually because they've also brought them together from different places and it's towards the end of the process. So you've loads of time to book it. It's no panic. And then outside of that, if you're flying to trade shows or conferences, again, they're either in they're in major markets that you can fly directly to from Dublin or London or through London to get to, you know. So, But it's also only three hours to Dublin. So it's not a massive drive compared to other countries. Just Ireland is smaller, so we think it's a big drive. But mm. really, it's like living in the outskirts of London or, or the outskirts of New York. Yeah, although that three-hour drive, because I know it well, it's a pain in the neck when you're going through Longford. And that one stretch when you're going through Roscommon, absolute pain. And that's even if you're not behind a tractor, right? But anyway, that's a different yeah, podcast. Yeah, Roscommon can invest a bit more in the roads. You can also fly now through, through the to the Tum motorway as well. You can drive, sorry. Uh, a different way through Tum, and it's about the same amount of distance, but you've two and a half hours of motorway instead of one hour of motorway. So it's, it doesn't save you time, but it's more comfortable. Fair point. Now, I take the point that you make that the fact that the it's a distributed model that you're dealing with in terms of the company has nothing to do with COVID. That's just the way the industry and the business is. Despite that, um, we might naturally be heading more into a hybrid distributed type of working model anyway as soon and i'm wondering uh, would you comment on that from two different angles one from you know setting up in a town like westport it, maybe it's not as important anymore as it would be in somewhere like dublin but also what is the business telling you at the moment about what our what all of our future might be in terms of hybrid working what what is it is there any data that you can see coming from payslip that would give you any hint of how we're going to be working is this is the the idea of a hybrid workplace is that just kind of a media creation or or do you think it'll happen yeah so i think uh it's definitely here to stay and i think it's become a practice and it's become a habit so it's now become an expectation for people that employers can be more flexible in the arrangements of work um so some studies run by NUI Galway recently showed that um 12 to 32 percent of people would like to work entirely from home and that up to nine percent of people have already relocated uh, within payslip state in terms of our customers what we see is that they already had an international footprint but in some locations they had many people that were from another international country um, and many of those employees relocated home during the COVID period of time and would now like to work from there. So um, the technology enables the work to be done, at least office-based work to be done remotely. Um, there is an impact on the employer in terms of compliance and arrangements that need to be made, not just from a payroll perspective, but also from like our, uh, an employment structure perspective. So we see our customers are going through this process whereby they're evaluating how many of their employees are located in locations other than where they had originally planned to be. And then they're choosing which cohorts of skills they're going to enable to be geolocated or which ones they want to bring back into a central hub. Um, and, and you can see that in the data on Payslip, whereby the customers are setting up new countries. Many of the countries have smaller headcounts in some of those countries because it's very um, team related or it's very person related. Um, and they expect that trends to absolutely continue. Mm. I mean, one of the, t- you know, the things, the consequences from that and coming back to what we were talking about four or five minutes ago, if that is the future and if that settles into a pattern, You'd have to wonder about the future of cities in general. Yeah, I'm I'm not a pessimist about the future of cities. I think that fundamentally they offer, like you mentioned earlier, in terms of relocating to a smaller town, you know, you have to decide, are you happy with the the variety of opportunity that's there and, and the, the population that you want to meet? Definitely if you're in your 20s and your 30s, you know, there's a lot of experimentation in terms of new skills you want to acquire different kinds of jobs you want to go to, different kinds of people you want to meet or, you know, preference, boyfriends, everything like that. So it's normal, I think, that people want to go to larger places where there is that selection. And, and, and Are you all- saying small towns are just for old people? No, I don't think so at all. I don't think I was totally old when I came here. So I, think, <laughs> I, think I, can't, I can't actually talk against myself in terms, in terms of that one issue. No, but I think it's natural that there's a point where you go to college and you go, or, or you go into your apprenticeships 
and then you need to just get out there and meet all sorts of people and decide who you're going to be. Just moving to the company itself and in general, we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months, uh, tech and business and software and uh, anything that meets in the middle online is booming in general. It's been a very strong market in general for uh, Irish business in that regard. Are you seeing that as well? Yes, we are. Um, so Payslip sells to multinational companies who are normally more, have normally have about more than 700 people outside of their HQ and are in more than five countries. So by the time a company is that, that large, they have very professional procurement processes that take a while. And um, so what we found at COVID was in the initial summer period in 2020, there was a stall in, in the sales processes because all of the companies had to look into their, look internally to make sure their people fundamentally had the equipment and were able to work remotely. But then as the summer developed, people saw, well, fine, they're working from there, but now we realise we don't have the tooling available for them to help them deliver Global Peril in a very efficient way, to deliver it in a standardised way across all the world. And we don't have business continuity between the members of the team in the different countries because Peril is so specific. So actually, we saw a big surge then from like September 2020 onwards, people, companies, saying, you know, we are looking for smart technology. We've automated our HR with Workday. We've automated our financials over here. Now we have this mission critical process that sits in between HR and finance, and we don't have any smart technology for it. How can Facebook help standardize and automate that? Um, and so we've actually seen a, a big upsurge, and also not just with the kind of target mid-market companies that we would want to talk to, but also with larger enterprise companies who've decided to digitize and um, really seek out a global peril control platform that can help them achieve what they need to, to, to be growth efficient. Okay. And the last question. It's interesting. Um, in May, you announced, uh, I think it was 8 million in a funding round. I think it's around 12 million overall now that you've raised. Yeah. It strikes me that the venture capital market over the last 12 to 18 months has exploded. In Ireland, we're on an annual run rate now of about 1.3 uh, billion euro, which is way above what we've ever done before. But it keeps increasing every eight yeah. to 12 months to the extent that it does occur to me um, that if you'd waited another six months, you might have gotten twice as much. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but you have to decide what's right for the business at the time, Adrian. And um, yeah, Global Payroll was definitely a, a hot spot for investment over the last year, generally because of all the obvious reasons related to COVID. Uh, so we had a very strong unsolicited interest from companies in the autumn period right through to January, February. So then we decided to run the fundraise uh, in March and April and get it closed off for the year so we, we could hit the ground running. So yeah, we're well capitalised. We had strong interest. I do agree with you that the Irish VC market has changed. What we see is strong interest from VCs that were always US focused or European focused. Now they also see the boundaries have gone down so they can invest in companies. And so there's a lot of uh, capital and VCs available to Irish uh, software companies that wouldn't really have been available three years ago. Mm. I mean, it must be tempting, whether it's Payslip or any other company, if there are such unsolicited um, if there's attention, it go, going your way, it must be very tempting at any given point to say, well, money is very cheap at the moment. Investors are looking for somewhere to, you know, to grow their cash. It might be worth me just taking another 10 or 20 or 40 million or whatever is offered on the table because it may not be as cheap in two or three years time. Yeah, that's from the cost of capital perspective. I understand as a, as a tech, as an investee, you will still always need to have your proof points about your product market fit, your market sizing, your readiness to deliver your sales um, plans. So there's still milestones you need to meet. Uh, and so I agree with you, you can always take in more fundraising, but the valuation will also be determined by uh, actually what the company has been doing and wants to do. So there's a certain point where you should only take in what you need in terms of managing dilution and also making sure that you stay uh, at the point of growth that you want to be at. Mm, okay. And very finally, um, I mentioned earlier that you said earlier this year that you hope to hire 150 new people. Yeah. How far along the line are you with that? 
Yeah, so we've hired another 50 people since then. So we're about a third of the way through that. Um, and they are a range of skills from software engineers through to customer success people. Um, for now, being September 2021, the key areas that we want to uh, boost are our sales team. Um, and they can be based out of Westport and Dublin. Uh, so we want people who are experienced in selling B2B SaaS. And then also software engineers for our product side of the house. Um, and they can all be based in, in ideally in Westport if they want to bring their surfboards with them. Uh, but also in, in Dublin if they want. Where can you surf in Westport? In Carnegie Beach. Okay. Very nice. It's five okay. kilometers long. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Where do you surf, Adrian? I don't, but I'm. I go to an area of Mayo where you can surf quite a bit, and uh, I, I wasn't aware of the special waves down in Westport. But I'm happy to be corrected, as you've just done. Yeah. In, in fairness, like Carnegie is on the other side of Lewisburg, so mm. it is like a 25 minute drive, but that's not a lot for like the the avid surfer. Um, but yes, we can do all the other things, the paddle boarding, the boating. I was, uh, yesterday was a beautiful day. I finished work at quarter past six and I was on a boat at 20 to seven. So uh, you can definitely actually live the dream that you started. So we, we're doing it and we're happy here. So we'd encourage as many people as possible who are interested in working in tech in the West to, to have a chat with us. Okay. So if you want to surf or you want a boat and you've got great skills, Payslip is yeah. your company. Okay. Fidelma McGurk, CEO and founder of Payslip. Thanks very much for joining the podcast today. And from me, Adrian Wackley, the tech editor of the Irish and Sunday Independent. That's all we have time for. I will talk to you same time next week. Bye-bye.